What is up everybody and welcome back to the Mid-Level Media channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. And today guys, we are going to talk about 10 movies from 1981 that I think you need to have in your collection. So we are continuing my 10 movie recommendations from a specific year. I've already done three of these. I've done one in 1979, I've done one in 1980, and I did one from 1984 because I did that as a part of the 1984 month. I want to go from 1980 up to 2022 this year. Maybe by the time I get to it, we'll be in 2023, but I might actually jump around a little bit. I've been having this thought lately that maybe I'm not going to go and see. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys uh, think I should do. Do you want me to go in order? Do you want me to do 1982 next and just keep going um, until we get to 2022? Or do you want me to jump around a little bit? I'm open to either one, but let me know in the comment section below. But look, if this is your first time stumbling upon this channel, I, I cover Blu-rays, movies, physical media, all that kind of stuff. If you like owning the movies that you love, all this stuff behind me right here, hit the subscribe button. We do videos every single day on this channel talking physical media movies, and you would definitely enjoy it. So hit the subscribe button. Also, be sure to like this video. Look, liking videos, it's underrated. I, I say that all the time. It's underrated. It doesn't take too long. Just, just hit that like button. It, I would really appreciate it. It really helps out the video and the channel. Also, comment down below, guys, because we've got some movies. We've got 10 movies from 1981. Um, and I know that more than 10 movies from 1981 were released, so let me know some stuff that I missed in the comment section below. Let me know some of your recommendations from the year, because I haven't seen any everything. You know, I, In fact, I haven't seen a lot of stuff, uh, so there's probably a lot of recommendations that you can call out that I can check out eventually. And also, let me know what you think of my picks as well, and then you know, turn on the bell notifications for all future videos. I get a lot of criticism. Um, I get a lot of criticism with these videos, some not a lot, of, maybe like one or two people commented, but saying that I, I, I cover too much horror, I talk about horror too much, um, I can't help it, that's the genre that I like the most, it's a genre that I've seen the most movies in, so that's what I, I talk about the most, and when I highlight these specific years, um, it's hard for me to not jump into the horror genre and talk about movies from that uh, time period that were horror films, because that's what I've seen, and also 1981, if you guys don't know, was a fire year for the horror genre. There are so many great movies that we are going to get into right now, starting with um, American Werewolf in London, a great horror film from 1981. I mean, this is an absolute masterpiece of a horror film directed by John Landis. And if it wasn't for another werewolf movie that came out this year, I would say it is far and away the best werewolf movie that came out this year. But not only did this movie come out, but another movie came out this year that was a werewolf movie, and it was a great horror movie as well, but I'm not going to talk about that one in this video because we might talk about it in another video. I might do 1981 Part 2, uh, but I didn't want to talk about two uh, werewolf movies in one video. But American Werewolf in London is an absolute classic. I love this movie so much, directed by John Landis. It's just the, balance, the perfect balance of, of comedy and horror. I love the characters in this movie. It's a romance as well, very sweet romance that ends very tragically. And I just love it. Everything in this movie completely works for me. There are some people that watch this movie and the comedy mixed with the horror doesn't completely land for them. And I definitely understand that. Um, but for me, it all works. It all works perfectly. And this has the best. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll go ahead and call out the other werewolf movie. The Howling released this year, directed by Joe Dante. It's a fantastic werewolf movie. I do not like that movie as much as I do this. I think that this is a masterpiece. I think that The Howling is a really great horror movie, but the transformation scene, The Howling doesn't have nothing on this movie as far as the transformation scene. I know Rick Baker worked on both of the transformation scenes, but the work he did in this one, I don't know. I just love it. I think it's fantastic. I love that it's shot in the broad daylight, or not the broad daylight, but the, the, the light of the apartment. Like, it's all well lit, and like, you can just see everything. You see every single uh, transformation uh, part, uh, part of his body transforming, I think is what I was trying to say. Um, and it's just a brilliant scene, just how it's orchestrated and choreographed and laid out there. So I love American Werewolf in London. I got this awesome uh, Arrow video set, the 4K set. I also have the Blu-ray set. Um, and it looks incredible on 4K, but one thing I'll say is if you have that Blu-ray set, it looks great on Blu-ray as well. Um, maybe wait till it goes down in price a little bit. American Werewolf in London, it's a great movie. Highly recommend this Arrow Video 4K transfer. It's a great transfer, especially if you never bought that Blu-ray. If you didn't buy the Blu-ray, then you are sitting uh, pretty. Just go ahead and get that 4K release. Great special features and all that stuff on it as well. So let me talk about this next movie. 
uh, from 1981. And we're going into a, a little bit of the dramatic category here, but this is Mommy Dearest. So this is a release from Paramount Presents that came out, I think, in 2021. This movie starring Faye Dunaway. So I had never seen this movie before, and I did not know that this was a biopic based on uh, Joan, Joan Crawford, uh, classic actress Joan Crawford. I had no idea it was a biopic until I started watching it. I actually thought this was like a horror movie um, of some kind. So I started watching it and I, I was like, Joan Crawford, that name sounds familiar. And then I looked into it. I was like, oh, this is based on a true story. It's based on uh, her daughter uh, by the name of Christina Crawford, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Christina Crawford, her daughter wrote a book on how her mother abused her and all this stuff and how she treated her as a kid and stuff. So uh, this movie is based on that book. Thank goodness this came out like four years after Joan died so she didn't have to go through seeing herself portrayed on screen as she is in this movie. Um, even though she, if what if what this movie is it is true... Um, then I guess uh, she deserves it because she's an awful person uh, in this film to her daughter. But as for the movie itself, I think Faye Dunaway is fantastic in this role. But I don't know. I thought it was it was a little bit too over the top at points just with the abuse. And like she's just straight up like punching her child on the ground. She's like eight years old. Like, I don't know. It's it's very strange. It's very over the top, and I just think that the I didn't think that the balance that the movie struck with the tone was perfect for this kind of material. I thought they could have done a little bit better, been a little bit more subtle with some aspects of it. I, I understand that maybe that's what happened, um, but the way they filmed it, I don't know, it just kind of kind of rubbed me the wrong way a little bit. And see, there's a there's literally a scene where they're like uh, strangling each other, and Joan Crawford like tackles her daughter. She's a little bit older in this scene. She's like in her early twenties or late teens or something. And you can see as they're falling to the ground that her daughter is like a dummy. It's like a stunt dummy. So if you got to get a stunt dummy, it's just it's way too over the top. But it's a hilarious scene the way that it looks when her actual head hits the ground. But um, so my main takeaway from this movie is Faye Dunaway is fantastic. The movie itself, it's a good movie. It's a little bit too long. I do at the end of the day because I am recommending this to you guys. I do at the end of the day recommend that you own this and watch this, um, but it's it's not the best movie, I guess is what I would say. It has some good special features as Paramount Presents. I think it's got more than the usual Paramount Presents now that I think of it. I think there's usually only like a filmmaker focus and that's it, but this has some other deep dives and interviews and stuff in it. It's got a commentary by John Waters, so I guess that's pretty cool as well. But yeah, I do recommend that you grab this, and right now you can get this for a pretty decent price of $20.49 for this Paramount Presents title, and also also, this American Werewolf, I forgot to tell you the price on this, but this is $29.99, so this is pretty cheap, um, and especially if you still get this hard box case with it, which I still think uh, that they're selling those, but maybe not. It has been out a few months, but let's get into my next recommendation. This is Stripes. Uh, with Bill Murray and Ivan Reitman film. And I think in my last recommendation video, I recommended uh, Meatballs. So Stripes is the evolution of Reitman as a comedic director, I would say. And this was right before he would do Ghostbusters, go on to do Ghostbusters. And um, this also has Harold Ramis in it as well. So it has those Ghostbusters vibes with the Murray and uh, Ramis chemistry together. It's got John Candy in it. So that's an automatic like plus to it as well. And it's just a really fun like war movie comedy with just just some good comedic beats to it. And I just think it's a really fun movie from 1981 that if you have not seen Stripes, it's a classic comedy, you should check it out. So this is available on 4K, but only in that Columbia Classics Volume 2 set. But that is $98 right now. So it's not very expensive. And you also get Taxi Driver in there. You get all kinds of other movies in there. Look it up um, and check it out. But yeah, on 4K, you can get it. Uh, for the $98.99. Again, it's not standalone, but if you just want to get the Blu-ray, you don't want to spend that kind of money, it is available on Blu-ray for $12.69, but I highly recommend Stripes. It's a great movie, and again, if you want to see like how they arrived at the comedic, the comedy in Ghostbusters, watch Stripes, and you'll, you'll kind of understand and see that evolution. So, like I said, a lot of great horror movies in 1981. We're, we've got a lot of them to go through here. Uh, but look, you cannot talk about 1981 and not mention this iconic Sam Raimi movie, uh, The Evil Dead. Like, this is such an iconic movie. It created an entire franchise. Um, it created an entire horror icon in, in Ash, uh, Bruce Campbell's Ash. So... Such a good movie. Again, the story of the making of this movie is legendary. How Sam Raimi basically made this um, with nothing, just change from his couch. 
just changed from his couch cushions and just like made all this stuff and the equipment and rigged everything himself as far as like the special effects and stuff and just did it all himself. He did it with his friends and everything else. So just how this movie was made, you got to respect it, even though some of the stuff doesn't hold up completely. I love this movie, though, to be honest, like this is my second favorite of the franchise. I know a lot of people love Evil Dead 2, but I really like this movie a lot more because Evil Dead 2 goes into like full parody territory. This is a horror comedy for sure, but it's definitely more horror than it is comedy, whereas Evil Dead 2 is more comedy than it is horror. So, uh, you know, depending on where you fall on that, as far as what you want out of your horror comedies, it'll depend on which one you like more. But I actually like the Evil Dead remake the best of the entire franchise. So I'm one of those uh, crazy people. I, just, I can't wait for that Evil Dead 4K that's coming out this fall. But the Evil Dead, it's a horror classic. You can't talk about 1981 and not talk about this movie. But this is the Evil Dead uh, Blu-ray steel. Like, I actually don't own this on 4K yet, but the 4K is $14.99. It's very cheap, but if you want to get the Steelbook, the Steelbook is $12.99. It's a really nice Steelbook, and again, it's a cheap Steelbook. It's got a cool image on the back. It's got some, some of the old uh, Anchor Bay disc artwork on there as well, so cool stuff with this Blu-ray release of The Evil Dead, but again, I need to get on upgrading that first one. I got The Evil Dead 2 um, on 4K, but I never upgraded this one for whatever reason. Maybe I should just get the groovy box set, but the Evil Dead, it's a classic. We had to talk about it. Also wanted to talk about and recommend it is Criterion Month, so we got to throw in a Criterion title in here, so I'm going to talk about Scanners. I have gone on record and said that I don't love this movie, but the reason I'm going to say that you uh, you know, need to own this one is that it is a classic David Cronenberg film. It does have an iconic horror scene at the beginning. Like, that scene, say what you want about the rest of the film, I wasn't completely engaged. It's not a bad movie by any means. I just, I thought it was a little bit overhyped and just that opening scene with the head blowing up is so awesome and so iconic. The rest of the movie doesn't quite live up to that moment and I'm just not completely sold a a on David Cronenberg as a filmmaker outside of like the bigger films like A History of Violence and The Fly. Um, those movies I love. Videodrome I love as well, but this one didn't completely. I am willing to rewatch this one, but it is a Criterion. It's got great special features, all kinds of great special features and interviews and all kinds of good stuff on the making of this movie. It's got incredible artwork on this Criterion release. Again, you can get this right now for 20 bucks. Um, it is a digipack. I love the digipacks. That artwork is so freaking killer. It's got a nice booklet on the inside. It's got cool disc art. So even though like I, I don't love the movie, I do highly recommend that you get this uh, Blu-ray release because it's really cool. Just hopefully when you pick it up, they don't uh, immediately upgrade it to 4K um, after that. But great special features, like I said. The transfer on this one looks freaking fantastic as well. So scanners, I do recommend getting. I had to give Criterion a little bit love. It is uh, the Criterion sale month. So this next one's a little obscure. So for all of you all that's going to say, hey, you're picking all the mainstream ones. You know, this is not a mainstream title. I'd never heard of this title before Mill Creek released it. And I grabbed this retro VHS edition of it. But Neighbors starring John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd. And also Kathy Moriarty, who is uh, in Raging Bull. And it's also directed by John G. Alvidson, who directed Rocky and the Karate Kid. So what... Uh, it's I can't I can't see that direction in this movie at all. This is just a very strange, awkward, dark comedy. Um, I would compare this kind of to The Burbs. Um, it's basically like Dan Aykroyd's character moves in next door to John Belushi. John Belushi is just a regular guy. He just wants to relax. He wants his peace and quiet with his wife, watching TV, reading his newspaper. And Dan Aykroyd moves next door and he's very loud. He's very obnoxious. His wife is very loud, very obnoxious as well. She keeps trying to come in and hit on John Belushi um, and do all this kind of stuff with him. So that's kind of leads to some good comedy. And they're just a very weird weird like almost deranged couple that lives next door but like i said it's a very dark comedy but i found this movie super entertaining it says right here a comic nightmare and it's just it's dan Aykroyd and john belushi like you can't go wrong same people the same it's the same duo that was in the blues brothers so they did the blues brothers in 1980 and then they did a uh, neighbors in 1981 i think this is pretty good if you have not seen this movie again mule creek released it that is a uh, retro vhs slipcover right here for it and it's got cool artwork on the inside right there as well. I, just, I thought this movie was super fun. I actually want to watch it when I'm done with this video. Because uh, it's just a, it's a quick watch and it, it was just fun. I don't know. It was fun and weird and quirky. And I recommend it from 1981. Neighbors. Uh, just a great cast. And again, John G. Albertson. I mean, come on. Um, Escape from New York is my next pick. So I did an entire review for this movie. This was a first time watch for me this year. 
I love this movie. I love the John Carpenter vibes. Kurt Russell is awesome in this movie. Just a great action hero. And I love the story. Such an interesting story. Cool story. Like I said, it's an action movie, but it has those horror vibes in it as well. The score is fantastic. It's just such a cool action sci-fi, futuristic, like post-apocalyptic movie. Um, from 1981. And again, I'm kicking myself that I'd never watched. I think I watched Escape from LA when I was a kid. I do remember watching that one, but I never watched this one. And I can't say enough good things about this 4K transfer from Screen Factory. They did a hell of a job on this one. And this one is available uh, for $27.99 on 4K. That is a great price for a 4K, especially for this movie. It's fantastic. So look, 1981. This is probably going to be the most, well, I can't say that because we got two other titles below it that are part of huge franchises. But I would say this is probably the most like mainstream, family-friendly movie that I'm going to recommend um, here today on this video. But this is uh, Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark. You cannot talk about Raiders of the Lost Ark. Again, it's 1981. This is a huge movie directed by Steven Spielberg. I really enjoyed this movie. I'm not as big on the Indiana Jones franchise as a lot of people are. Temple of Doom is my favorite. I love that movie. I like this movie a lot. I like uh, Last Crusade a lot. And uh, even Crystal Skull. I'm kind of a fan of that movie as well. But Raiders is just, it's an iconic movie. We Just when it opens up, you see Harrison Ford. He just turned 80. Happy birthday to Harrison Ford. But see Harrison Ford go in that temple. He grabs that gold skull, running from the boulder. It's just all so iconic. The whole ending thing where everybody's faces is melting off. It's just, it's a great adventure movie with a great um, you know, lead action adventure hero in Harrison Ford. He just brings this character to life and just embodies it so well. It's incredible how in this time period he could create like two of the most iconic, like suave, charming characters in film history with Indiana Jones and Han Solo. So fantastic movie. If you haven't, if you somehow haven't seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, Check this movie out. It's fantastic. Now, I think it gets a little tricky as far as me recommending this because this just came out with a 4K Steelbook. It has a 4K box set that I think is around $50 right now, but the Steelbook for Raiders is $44.95. It actually jumped in price. Uh, just another reason why with the Steelbooks, they're a little bit more limited. You might want to jump on those immediately if you want them. I know Temple of Doom just came out this week, but um, yeah, Raiders of the Lost Stark is $44.95 for the, the 4K Steelbook. So you might just want to, if you haven't picked up that 4K set, just go ahead and grab the 4K set so you can get every single one of them. But if you want to get this on Blu-ray, you can probably find it on, on eBay, on Amazon for like two or three bucks. It's not very expensive on there. But yeah, Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Stark, great movie. Now let's get into two franchises that are very close to my horror love and heart. You guys probably, I can't believe both of these movies came out in the same year. And they're arguably... One of them definitely is, but the other one is arguably my favorite of the franchise. So the first one I'm going to talk about that's definitely my favorite of this franchise. I did an entire ranking video of this franchise on Friday the 13th, and this is Friday the 13th Part 2. came out in 1981, followed up the first one one year later, and I absolutely love this movie. It is my favorite. Baghead Jason, I've talked about it before is my favorite iteration of the character of Jason. I just find him the, the most scary. And I just love the look of that particular Jason. Jenny is just my one of my favorite final girls. One of, Definitely my favorite final girl of this franchise. I just think she's incredibly uh, smart the way that she outsmarted Jason at the end of it by putting on the mom sweater. Just that whole moment for me is super iconic and super nostalgic and I just always loved it as a kid so this movie was always my favorite and then he got the hockey mask and I was like what come on the hockey mask I love the mat the, the, the bag it's my favorite the, put the bag on again Jason damn it I know he did in the remake but I gotta watch that one again but look uh Friday the 13th part two is iconic it has great kills in it the freaking wheelchair kill the machete across the face he's rolling down is freaking awesome you're doomed you're all doomed crazy Ralph um, you know, gets his throat slit in this movie. It's just an awesome slasher movie. It's one of the best slasher movies of all time. Friday the 13th, part two. Love this movie. And it's the first movie that Jason came into the franchise. So you got to appreciate it for that. And look, this last one I'm going to talk about. I know everybody's everybody's trick-or-treated to death uh, over these movies. They're trick-or-treated to death. And you don't know what death is, damn it. Halloween 2 is is awesome it is awesome it it's probably honestly look i'm gonna go through these movies i'm gonna look at them real quick it's probably my favorite movie of 1981 i'm gonna be straight up honest with you and it's probably my favorite halloween movie i've been thinking about this one a lot ever since the 4k's released last year i always watch every halloween 
I watch Halloween and I watch Halloween 2 and I've done that since I was a kid and I always watch these movies together so I almost can't watch the first Halloween without watching this one like directly after it so when you watch them so much that way you start to think of them as one movie so I know a lot of people love the first Halloween film. I love the first Halloween film, but I always watch this one right after and it just feels like the same movie. So I really just love them together. Um, and if I'm being honest, I like part two. I, I always, when I was a kid, I just wanted to get through the first Halloween so I could get to part two. I love part two more. I just, I think the kills are better in part two. I, I, I don't, Lori's not my favorite. If I'm being honest, Jamie Lee Curtis says Lori is not my favorite. So the fact that she gets sideline through most of the movie and they focus on some of the other characters in the hospital. I like that. I like that it takes place all at night. It makes it creepier. It makes it scarier. And I just love this movie. I love the look of Michael Myers in this movie. I love the new mask. I love Dick Warlock's portrayal as Michael Myers in this film. Everything is just operating on a whole new level in Halloween 2. Again, I watch them both in the same movie, but it's just, I always want to get to Halloween too. It's, it's so when I think of it that way, I'm, I always tell people like my favorite Halloween's the first one, just because I feel like that's what you're supposed to say. But when I really think about it, if I watch them both as one movie and I like the second half better than the first half, I have to say that Halloween two is my favorite because it is. Um, so yeah, I love Halloween too. Donald Pleasance in this movie, like I said, you don't know what death is and he runs off and the score in this movie, I like the score better. It brings in some more like techno synth wave into it and I love the score by John Carpenter in this film. So Halloween 2 is just one of my favorite horror films of all time. It's my favorite Halloween film and it's probably my favorite film of 1981. So I love Halloween 2. High recommendation. So you can get this 4K still, I think still with this hard box case. I wish Screen Factory would do that on every single one of their 4Ks, but you can get it still for $26.96. So that's a great price for Halloween 2 um, on 4K. And this Halloween uh, 2 4K, this looks fantastic. So highly recommend picking that up. With that, guys, look, we are done. We, we're done talking about uh, 10 movies from 1981 that I think you need to add in your collection. I think you need to own. I appreciate you guys watching. Please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comment down below some of your own 1981 picks. Also, let me know what you thought of mine. Turn on the bell notifications and follow me on all my social media accounts. Those links are in the description. And we'll see you next time.